Oh my god, where to start? Okay, so now that I'm more than 56 hours in and felt head over heels for Sarah Morgan, I can honestly say that Starfield is probably one of the most fun games I've ever played in a very long time. You know, even from start to finish, the story itself, all the graphics and the mechanics, it's tons and tons of fun. And I got a lot to say about it, and I know you're gonna wanna listen. So how about you sit back and relax, and let's finally talk about the Starfield review. This video contains spoilers. You have been warned. See, the story of Starfield works like this. At the end of the day, your job is to help Sarah Morgan and her team at the Constellation discover the artifacts, a piece of tech older than time itself, as it would seem, to figure out what their uses are as they seem to have this very strange and mysterious power when not only near each other, but also to you, the characters, every time you touch one, you seem to be thrown across space and time, only at the end to discover a brand new power that you get by touching them. Now, at first, I'll admit, even I, the first time I saw this, I thought it was just going to be a bunch of fetch quests, but honestly, it's not. It's not that simple. It's It's... It's not even close. Because you see, all these artifacts that you hunt for in the game are actually linked to a mysterious power located at the center of the universe made by the creators known as the Unity. A power that in itself allows anyone who steps into it to be reborn as Starborn. Now here's the thing about the Unity, right? It's not fully understood on what it is. Even those Starborn who have already stepped into it, because every time you step into it, you get launched to a new universe, essentially allowing you to repeat this cycle over and over again. But even those same Starborn who have been doing this process, even they don't even fully understand what the Unity is. Their best guess is that it's just a way to get stronger, but every character throughout the game has their own version of what Unity really is, and it's really cool to see that each of these characters have their own real energy and vibe to them. For example, Sarah Morgan, one of the main characters in Starfield, her version of the Unity is that it's humanity's obvious next step into fully understanding the universe and the cosmos and everything else in it. Versus a character like Mateo who believes that the Unity is a gift from God. Now during all this time searching for all these pieces, you are not the only one searching for them, as the oh-so-fun Starborn will eventually find you. You see, their goal is to jump from universe to universe collecting all these artifacts and going to the Unity themselves just so they can evolve once more, killing anyone and everyone who gets in your way. This is when they finally find your universe, and I finally found that my actions have consequences in this game. You see, during the quest, A High Price to Pay, your companions will actually split up into two groups, with some of them staying at the Lodge and some of them going up to the Eye. The Eye actually sits above the planet and actually helps the Constellation find some of these artifacts, but this is where the problem gets in. The Eye actually gets attacked, and you have to pick a side. In my case, Ceremony and actually got sent to the eye, while Barrett actually stayed behind at the lodge. I was actually torn apart. I really liked Barrett. I thought he was a really cool dude, but at the time, I've already done some of Sarah Morgan's quest lines, and I've actually somewhat grown attached to the character, because the writing is just that good. I said, fuck it, and I went to go save Sarah. In my mind, that made more sense. And at first, I'm thinking, all right, I got a really fast ship. I'll go to the eye, grab Sarah, make sure she's all right, come back home to the lodge, and everything will be okay, but wrong. That's not what happens, because you see, whatever you do in this mission, somebody has to suffer. Because I saved Sarah, Barrett actually got killed. This is a main companion, someone you can actually play the entire game through. Because I made the choice to go grab someone I personally favored more, Barrett got killed. That is one thing I seriously did not expect. I did not expect Starfield to straight up just kill a major character like that, and it really threw me off guard. And honestly, it really, really started to show to me that, holy shit, I need to be careful of what I do, because what I do has a cause and effect. And you see, the companions are something that we need to talk about. My playthrough, I did all of my adventuring with Sarah Morgan for <laughs> reasons. I was down bad, yeah, sure, but I also really wanted to see how they would interact with the world around them, and I gotta say, I am extremely impressed with how Starfield handles NPCs. Not only will your companions have small pieces of dialogue depending on what planet you're on, but they also may have special pieces of interactions between each other. Nace in point, one of my favorite interactions between me and the Free Star Collective where I was on my way to become a sheriff and later a deputy. You see, their missions are alright, they're fine, but halfway through, I kind of got this feeling where, man, I'm just doing all the work and you're just kind of sitting here watching me do it. But a Imagine my shock and honestly my amusement when Sarah Morgan piped up saying, yeah, it's probably going so easy because we're doing it all. Honestly, I thought that was really, really funny, but it only got funnier when they actually responded to her basically saying that this was ranger business and she needs to stay out of it. That one interaction, it was so unexpected. I had to have been laughing for a solid two minutes, man. Knowing that your companions can actually interact with the world around him, it really makes you feel a lot more lived in. It makes each adventure just that more fun, always waiting to see what their next piece of dialogue is going to be. I love that, man. I always hated it previous games. Yeah, you had a companion with you, but did they really matter? They were almost not even there. It was more so a hired gun, and it was really, really disappointing, man. So seeing that this new game in Starfield really does a good job of making your companions actually feel like companions and not just hired guns is definitely a very nice and very well-accepted bonus. This wasn't even the first time I was caught laughing so hard in Starfield. You see, the first time this happened, I was caught and got hailed by another passing starship, only for them to tell me about my ship's extended warranty. Now, at this point, I told them 
them that. No thanks. I found them four other times before I got sick of it and just tried to blast them right out of the cosmos. That was honestly one of the funniest moments, not to mention finding a grandma ship out in the middle of nowhere who bakes treats and lets you come on board so you can rest and refuel. This game has so many little moments like that that honestly are just absolutely hilarious. The special encounters of this game are absolutely golden. Not to mention, I don't want to spoil too much because I know this video is already going to have some spoilers in it, but there is a very special ship in Starfield that has scenes in it that are so hilarious. I ended up finding it and jumping to a random system only for the bad guys there to tell me that they knew the ship's history, didn't believe it was actually that same vehicle, and then jetted out immediately in straight fear. It was some of the funniest things I've heard in a very long time to hear three to four ships basically shit themselves then immediately enter hyperspace all because my ship had a history to it was so so funny to me this game has a lot of special interactive moments that you really get to notice and really bring the game to life and they are absolutely just drop dead hilarious and your companions will interact with them along the way now while we're on the topic of companions there are only four that you can really romance and or marry in this game and in my opinion I thought this was really really smart especially because in my memory I never thought that pre previous companions, like for example, the ones you could romance in Fallout 4, or I'm sorry, hate me if you want, Skyrim as well. None of them were really that memorial to me. You know, none of them really stuck with me in memory because all their backstories seemed kind of hollow. But the thing about only having four of them in Starfield, each story seemed really unique and very well thought out. Take for example, Sarah Morgan. That's the person I ended up romancing and marrying in my game. I thought her backstory was actually kind of sad and tragic when you really think about it. See, Sarah Morgan served in the United Colonies military and worked as a ship navigator during the Colony War, and in 2319, she'd be promoted to the head of the UC Navigator Corps. However, only a year later, this entire thing was shuttered, eventually moving on to join Constellation in 2325, then she became the acting chair member of it. However, during this time in the Corps, she tragically lost a good amount of her crew as she thought they crash-landed and died on a local planet, and she's been living with this resentment and anger for years. You know, stuff like that, we don't really see that kind of in-depth character building in other games in the Bethesda as a series and during this time where you attempt to romance this character you have to go back and help her fix all these mistakes and find answers to what really happened that day and that's just this character there's four to choose from again it was a really smart idea to really focus on a small cast of characters for romance because i cannot imagine how bad it would have been if there were like five six seven eight of the different characters you could choose alongside these four now don't get me wrong maybe in the dlc we'll get a few more options but honestly i think it was really smart to keep it to these four because at least that way you have a lot more time with a lot less people it can really make out a a truly fleshed out in-depth story that can really pull you in and it definitely pulled me in personally out of all of them i thought sarah morgan had the best backstory now you see this is where things really get interesting because during every single bethesda game that at least i've ever played there's always been some sort of bug some sort of issue from skyrim to fallout 4 to 76 oblivion morrowind's not exempt from it either every single game has had some sort of issue but starfield is one of the very few games where i can say i didn't have any major game breaking bugs now don't get me wrong i had a few bugs in particular like one of them if i were to use a sniper rifle quite often and i would aim down the sights i would seemingly get locked in this position where i couldn't aim up down i can only move with w a s and d and i can only fix this issue by holding on the r button and completely sheathing my weapon that was only the real issue i could find but i never really had any performance issues fps issues any gameplay issues overall my experience with starfield was really really smooth now don't get me wrong my specifications I have a 4090 over here and a 12900k yes i understand i'm pushing very powerful hardware but that doesn't mean jack shit coming from the previous game followed 76 which ran like hot garbage on my exact system but you know here's the thing me personally i am really really shocked to see a game launch like this and it really shows that delaying this game was the right thing to do now don't get me wrong i'm specifically talking about the pc version if you are going to play this game on xbox apparently those guys are going through it over there i feel really really bad for them. just one of my own friends the game crashed on them at least a good three four times and i do really feel bad for those but hey i'm only played the pc version that's the only one I have to look at and review today. But I will have to say my version on PC, it did run smooth as butter. I was always getting at least 100 plus FPS, which sucks in a way because I really did want to get some gameplay or some footage of some of these hiccups that everyone else were having, at least on my end so I could show all of you. But in my experience, I just didn't have any of these problems. Starfield on my computer ran smooth as butter. Now, like I said, Xbox, it's a completely different story. It's not cool. In my opinion, I believe it needed a bit more time to bake or, or there should have been a better day one patch. But if you can play the game on PC, in my opinion, this is the best way to play Starfield, at least this very moment.
Now look, one thing that has to be mentioned is that when it comes to Starfield, Starfield as it was advertised and I believe as what it was expected to be are in two completely different camps set by two completely different types of people. On one hand, if you're already a Bethesda fan and you already knew what their previous games were like and how they played, you had a really solid idea or at least a better idea than most of what Starfield was actually going to be when the game come out. Because a lot of people have been comparing this game to No Man's Sky and in my opinion, that's a bit unfair. You see, Starfield is its own game, kind of in its own category. More so where it's an RPG set in space and less so being a space sim. That's one of the reasons that I really like Starfield though. The game looks really, really good. The game plays really, really well. And as far as Bethesda games go, this is easily one of the very best Bethesda games I've ever played. Starfield is one of those games where I think years from now, not only from the modding scene, but from the DLCs as well that are supposed to come out, the first one being Shattered Space, I think Starfield is going to be one of those games where down the line, we look back as one of the best games to drop, possibly in 2020. 23, 100% the best game to drop for Bethesda. So in my opinion, Starfield is one of those games where it easily deserves an eight to nine out of 10, if you understood what you were walking into, all right? If you want to compare it to every other game on the market, sure, give it a seven, whatever. But in my personal opinion, I believe Starfield is a very easy eight to nine out of 10, regardless of what everybody says right now, because I can promise you a year from now, it's going to flip, it's going to be fucking hilarious. While you're out there exploring the vastness of space in this awesome game, why don't you go down there and explore that subscribe button. I mean, hey, you already made it this far. You might as well stick around at this point. And check out another video we have on the channel. Also like the need to know informational video that I did before Starfield actually even came out along with the first impressions video that I did. Both are really, really great. I know you'd enjoy both of them, but more than anything, I'm just glad you stopped on by today and made it this long. If you did, let me know. Seriously, that would be, that would be fucking incredible. But besides all that, man, it's been fun. I'm Starlight. I'm going to bounce out. See you guys later.